Okay, so in the last section of this book, uh, what we're doing is we're looking at three examples of types of reactions. And I really called it on the next slide, sorry, uh, three families of reactions. What we're looking at is the way three different groups in the periodic table tend to react with other elements. So combustion reactions are really reactions of oxygen uh, to produce an oxide and heat. And so I'll show you some combustion reactions. So we tend to think, uh, because this is the way uh, we're initially taught, that when you're, you, you have a combustion reaction, that's just something like wood or it's something like paper. Uh, and that is for, for sure a type of combustion reaction. But oxygen can react violently with many metals like iron um, and magnesium. And those undergo the same kinds of processes. So in essence, a combustion reaction just means it's reacting with oxygen and produces energy or heat. Then we'll look at alkali metal reactions. Now the alkali metals are those metals that are found in group one. So we're looking at hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Now, when we're talking about those particular, that particular group, group 1A or group 1, uh, what happens is when they, when they react with halogens, they tend to form uh, uh, MX type compounds, so metal and the halogen and the exact formula it's just is almost always determined just by the charges of the ions and so we'll look at that as well um, they will also react with water to form hydroxides and hydrogen gas let me write that down i forgot to put that hydrogen gas would be h2 gas and it turns out as the as you go down the column of the alkali metals, the lowest alkali metals tend to be the most reactive. So those would be things like cesium and francium tend to be the most reactive metals. The last class are the reactions of the halogens. Okay, so the halogens will react to form ionic halogen compounds. And so, for example, if you react chlorine with sodium, right, halogens, by the way, Going back to our periodic table, halogens are those elements in group 7A. So we're looking at fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and a little known element known as astatane. Um, very little of astatane actually exists in the earth. They estimate there is only about uh, 25 grams in the entire earth. And it's only there because there's uranium and um, some other radioactive isotopes that are decaying and they produce uh, acetane as a byproduct of decay. Anyways, more on that later. Uh, halogens will also react with other halogen halogens to produce what are called interhalogen compounds and I will give you some examples of that. But the most reactive halogens turn out to be not at the bottom but turn out to be at the top of uh, the group. So fluorine is the most reactive of the halogens. So we're going to use this as also an opportunity to practice our balancing of reactions. So let's look at the reaction of sodium with oxygen in a combustion reaction. Uh, what you're going to get is you're going to get the metal oxide. So you get an oxide and heat. So when you have sodium, the oxide is sodium oxide. So how do you know what the formula of sodium oxide is? Well, you have to base it on the charge. So oxides have oxygen 2 minus in them. And the alkali metals, because of their position in the periodic table, right? this group 1 here, group 1, all have plus 1 charge. So if we're taking uh, sodium, Sodium's got a plus one charge. That means the formula for the sodium oxide is Na2O. And then you're left with having to balance it. And so to balance this reaction, you're going to have to do two Na2Os. And then you're going to have to have four sodiums. Now this reaction is uh, so... Uh, elemental, I mean, you have sodium, it's kind of a pun, uh, 
only sodium on, and oxygen on the other side and their individual elements, you, you can start with the sodium oxide and then start balancing back and forth that way. It turns out it's not very hard to balance these once you get the hang of it. Now, when oxygen reacts with a hydrocarbon, in this case butane, if you remember what that means, four carbons, alkane, um, what will happen is you'll form water vapor from the hydrogen and then you'll form the oxide of carbon and in, an, and in a complete combustion where you have plenty of oxygen what you make is carbon dioxide and these it turns out for hydrocarbons or hydrocarbon uh, type compounds containing oxygen, uh, these always produce the same two products in heat. So, for example, um, paper is actually made of cellulose, and cellulose is actually a polymer of C6H12O6. Um, it's a polymer of glucose, which is the sort of the sugar that your brain operates on, really. Uh, but when you burn glucose, you still get CO2 and water. Okay. Typically, CO2 gas and water vapor, so uh, gaseous water. Um, anyways, <sighs> so how do you balance this, right? Start with the most complicated, and then you need four carbons, and you need five oxygens. So that takes care of these guys. And now you need to do the oxygens, and so you can, if you want, you can do your little C... H and O down the middle but right now I have 4 and 4 and then I have 10 and 10 but on the right side what I have is I have uh, 4 times 2 which is 8 plus 5 times 1 5 times 1 uh, which is 5 so now what I need is 13 13 oxygens so it because there's no oxygen in the C4H10, it all has to come from here, and then we use the same general technique that we used uh, in uh, the earlier part of this chapter when we discussed balancing uh, reactions. We're going to go ahead and call this 13 over 2, 13 halves, and then we have to multiply everything by 2, so go like this multiply by 2, and then you're going to have 2 C4H10s plus 13 O2s makes 8 CO2s and 10 H2Os. Okay, so same general practice that we did before, but in this case now we predicted the products of the reaction. We'll look at alkali metal reactions. Uh, alkali metals will react with halogens. And the way, again, that you predict the product is you look at the ionic compound, sodium chloride, because you're going to have an ionic, in, uh, ionic compound with, with the sodium and, sorry, I keep pointing at the wrong thing, sodium, or with the wrong thing, and the chlor, uh, chlorine. So the compound is going to be made of sodium ions and oxide uh, chloride ions which is just na plus and cl minus so you can write uh, na cl because it's a one and one and then you have to balance and so again you're going to put a two here and a two here to get it balanced uh, i looked at the cl2 and recognized that i needed to have two sodium chlorides in the product so that's where i got the two from and then i balanced the sodium because that was the only thing left so that's an example of an alkali metal reaction with halogens. It can also react with water to form hydroxides. Uh, typically, the reaction looks like this. Lithium hydroxide, like this. Because, the, for example, um, lithium as an ion makes Li+. And then... The water will break up. If you think about water as H and OH, what you're going to end up with with is OH minus, right? Sorry, put on this side. You'll end up with an OH minus that goes here. And then you got to do something with the extra hydrogen. It turns out that comes out as hydrogen gas like this. 
So this hydrogen gas is always one of the products when an alkali metal reacts with um, water. This is always a product. And the other product is a metal hydroxide. So LiOH would be uh, lithiums of metal, so that would be a, a metal hydroxide. So those are the two kinds of products that you always get when alkali metals react with water. Okay, so halogens, group 7, will react with metals to form halogen compounds. Uh, the ones that are easy to predict are the ones that always have fixed charges. Um, so, for example, aluminum in an ionic compound, so what we're going to write here is an ionic compound. Aluminum would be Al3+, plus, and bromine would be the bromide ion is what it gives us, so Br- minus like that. So we would predict that the product would be AlBr3. And then we have to balance. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. Notice you have a 2 with this and a 3 with this. So the trick to making this one easy is to realize you have to have the same number of bromines on each side. So you're going to have to cross multiply. You're going to go 3 here and a 2 here. So that'll give you, on the left side, six bromines, on the right side, six bromines. And so all that's left to do is balance the aluminum, and I'll drop a two in here, and then I'll be all done balancing. The last type of uh, inter uh, re reaction of halogens is just a reaction with other halogen uh, molecules. So bromine and iodine will react they're both part of the diatomics which is why they're br2 and you're going to get two uh, br or so i should say probably ibr compounds the order that you do the i and the br at this point really isn't that important but there is actually a specific order for these things there's some rules for it uh, but for now we won't worry about that now um Okay, so um, AT, astatane, is actually the only halogen that is not diatomic. What they have studied of it has shown that it's not diatomic. Uh, iodine is a purple solid. Astatane is actually a black solid. And when these two react, what you'll get is uh, AT, I, and then you'll have to balance that. So you'll need two here because you have two iodines, and that means you'll have two here. So that would be the reaction of astatine with iodine. There really isn't that much around to study, but what they've studied is it seems to react like the other halogens, um, but it is actually monatomic and a black solid. You remember fluorine, chlorine um, are gases at room temperature bromine is a liquid iodine is a solid that's purple and acetane is a solid that's black and it's monatomic all the others are diatomic so that finishes this chapter it's a little bit shorter than the other chapters but i want to encourage you to spend extra time studying this material get on it as early as you can and uh, try to learn the material as best you can because this is some of the these are some of the calculations that you'll be carrying on with for the whole year of general chemistry